look at us. Brilliant. <laughs> Well, hello to those of you who have joined us. We are so glad and I expect that some might pop in or out for a little while, but we are happy to talk to those who pop in or pop out and join us. Um, we're going to start off with some introductions here. And so, yeah, let's get going. So I am Lauren. Y'all know that because you came to my profile here. But I am Miss Mylan Crown and Scepter, which is a local title holder for the Miss Tennessee organization. And my community service initiative, both of ours revolve around mental health. Mine in specific is called Let's Get Real, Mental Health is Medical. So that's an overview and we'll dive more into those later. We also met because we both worked at Disney and there's this big Facebook page with lots of people who were character performers at disney so that's actually how we connected there and i'm very glad we did i worked at disney world from 2016 to 2020 as a character performer and a little other background is i attended union university which is a pretty small school in tennessee um and I went there for both my bachelor's of science in business administration, as well as my MBA, which I graduated from December, 2022. That was difficult to say. I live in Memphis now, and I'm originally from the Northwest suburbs of Chicago, but I have been in Memphis now for a couple years. So glad to be here. I would love if you could take a chance to introduce yourself now. Well, it's nice to finally get to talk to you face to face or face to screen, but uh, my name is Lexi Lynn Taylor. I am 26 years old from Southern California. I am Miss Woodland Hills 2023 competing for Miss California in June. Very excited. Same night as you, Lauren. And my CSI is movement for mental health. So still mental health based, but mine surrounds the treatment and advocacy and education about movement based mental health therapies and really non traditional approaches to mental health care. My background is I worked at Disneyland. It was my first job ever still in high school from 2014 to 2016 in entertainment. And then in Walt Disney World from 2019 to 2021, also in entertainment. And then I worked for Universal Studios several times was opening cast of Universal Studios Beijing in Japan, where I played Marilyn Monroe, which was so exciting. Oh, did I say Japan? I'm in Beijing. Either way, Universal Studios in a foreign country, which was really fun. I didn't and know I, that, actually. Oh, you didn't? Well, no, surprise, that's awesome. I, I got back from China a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> Miss China. <laughs> yes, Miss China. That's me. Um, and so I uh, was born and raised in Southern California uh, in a little town called Corona. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you to the rest of y'all who have joined. If you ask questions throughout the live, she has a couple friends who are going to take note of those and we're going to have some Q&A time as well. So feel free to ask questions as we go. We just may not address them immediately. So why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about your story with mental health, why you chose this as your community service initiative and whatever else you wanna share about that, given that it is Mental Health Awareness Month. Happy Mental yeah. Health Awareness Month, everyone. Yes, Mental Health Awareness Month. So go get the care that you need and hopefully you'll learn something new by sitting here and having this conversation with us today. So my journey with mental health I first saw a therapist, child psychologist, after a really bad car accident when I was about three or four years old, and I was seeking treatment for what I now realize was like simple PTSD. And that was my first encounter with a mental health professional, which was really fun as a kid because it's all playing with Barbie dolls and telling stories. It's not the really hard stuff that you have to dig into in adulthood. So I had a really positive experience with that. And then in high school, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and I was put on medication, but the medication didn't do much for me. In fact, it made me a bit worse. And so my mom and I decided to wean myself off of it and I started feeling immediately better. In fact, I re-enrolled in dance classes and I realized, wow, after a dance class, I'm feeling really good. Like I'm feeling 
better than I felt in days, better than when I just go sit in the sun and talk about my feelings, which is basically where Movement for Mental Health started. And since moving back from China, I've begun to study yoga therapy, which is how Movement for Mental Health was really born. And now my relationship with mental health is I see my therapist every single week on a Tuesday, whether I need to or not, because I've realized the consistency with mental health care is key. It's not seeking it out when you need it, because then you're always going to be in crisis mode. And so that's that's a bit why I'm here today. What about you, Lauren? Yeah. So I um, ha am partnered with NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And that was a new partnership that I made this year. And I became a certified speaker for them. And that's been something really impactful for me and something I've been really enjoying working with this year for my community service. So one thing we do when we become a certified speaker for NAMI is we um, learn how to best share our stories. So as a very brief run through of my story, when I was around 10, I started to experience pretty intense sadness and hopelessness. Um, I wasn't really sure how to handle those feelings given I was at an age where we're not going to be able to process our emotions like we do as adults at that age. So I thought for the longest time, well, maybe I'm just a negative person. Maybe I'm just sad. I don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but I knew there was something wrong. In fifth and sixth and seventh grade, I cried after school almost every day. I switched schools in eighth grade due to bullying. Um, and it was just very hard. And there were definitely times where it was better. There were times where it was worse, but it was always there. And how I describe it to those who have not experienced depression is it's really like a dark cloud over your head. And under that cloud, you can't experience any sort of happiness or joy or positive thinking. There's only negativity under that cloud once you're stuck under it. So that's really how my depression felt for me. And even still now, I still have that come, but I am in recovery with my depression. So now I have tools to be able to not let that um, take over. So that's a bit about my history with depression. Um, I also like to manage my mental illness with a combination of medication, which thankfully does work for me in my case, but everybody's story is so individual and unique. So what works for one person, won't work for everybody. But for me, that's something that's worked for me as well as therapy and um, just being able to share my story. That's something I always wanted to do was to be able to share my story someday to help those who may be struggling the way that I have. So to share a few little fast facts on mental illness for everybody, um, some things you might not know, and this is straight from NAMI's website, um, one in five adults experience mental illness every single year, and one in six children experience it every single year. Um, one in 20 experience serious mental illness every year, which I imagine their definition of serious would probably include something that's debilitating to everyday life. 50% um, of all lifetime mental illness begins by age 14 and 75% by age 24. So the Miss America organization goes up until the age of 28. So that's a bit of context. The women competing in this organization, our age where we are young, 75% people by that age of 24 will experience what will maybe become lifetime mental illness. And suicide is the second leading cause of death among people aged 10 to 14, which is pretty dramatic. Yeah. So that's a little bit more about mental health and just some facts. It's important to share these facts so we can destigmatize mental health since 20% of the people on this stream are going to have it. So I think it's important to destigmatize. Do you have anything else you want to add about mental health? I do. So uh, some of the research that I did in Movement for Mental Health is, well, yes, long-standing mental illness, one in five, completely accurate. But at least like 50% of the U.S. population has reported that they're less happy in the past 50 years. 
And also on top of that, 50% will encounter mental illness in their life because it's not just about if you personally deal with it, but it's about the loved ones around you or just your friendly neighbor who's always smiling that's really struggling behind closed doors. And that's why we're having this conversation. So all these people here with us can just be more informed. Yeah, absolutely. So as you all know, one thing um, that brought us together here today is our history of working at Disney. So it's it really is a big, a big sisterhood, just like Miss America is. I feel like I've been a part of three sororities, which are Kappa Delta, Miss America, and working as a Disney character performer. I'm all for all the sisterhoods. So um, yeah, I'd love for you to share about wherever you want to share about your experience at Disney. Um, how it's maybe prepared you for Miss America and how it might have affected your mental health and anything else you want to share about it. Yeah, so I I was very lucky. I didn't have a difficult audition journey like I know most have. I was incredibly fortunate and this is something I don't take for granted. I was hired at my first ever audition when I was still 17 years old, a month away from turning 18. So I went into the company bright eyed, bushy tail, ready to step into the magic pun intended, uh, to, to understand. <laughs> and I, I just really had no like preconceived notions that this is going to be something that is incredibly mentally draining and taxing day in and day out because we are solely focused on creating magic for others. But when you're sitting backstage with a bunch of other fellow beautiful young men and women who all have goals in common, we're all very similar for a very specific reason, I didn't quite understand the cattiness that would be there and the competition, not even necessarily from other people, but from ourselves and the way we would mentally tear down all the walls and strength we've built up over time because we're repeatedly seeing pictures of ourselves, we're repeatedly, repeatedly getting comments about our appearance and going, oh, that's not the same girl I saw the other day. She was way prettier. Like, I can't tell you how many times I heard that or just getting really disparaging comments online. And yes, I thought that it would be okay because there was a certain amount of removal because it's not me. It's a role that I am playing. But after I don't know how many years I've done this, it, it took a real toll. And more so when I was playing in Marilyn Monroe at Universal Studios Hollywood, people were a lot more cutthroat because it wasn't necessarily a family friendly environment. And so people were openly a lot more cruel. And there were so many days when I would just walk in and be sobbing my eyes out as I'm trying to put my face on to get ready and go out to make other people happy. And then two seconds before I turn that corner and walk on set, it's just like a, a switch flipped. And it, it did not help me in the long run. All of that suppression, all of that just holding down all those nasty feelings and not talking about it. It's why I ended up leaving the company the first time at two and a half years, which I almost immediately regretted. And to this day, I'm sitting here going, you know, I think I really missed out on some long-term opportunities with the company because I didn't get the help I needed dealing with these things that I know all these people around me are dealing with. And it's because we were kind of encouraged by our peers and the environment. I think it has changed in the past couple of years, but to not talk about it, to not talk about how it felt to have those things talk about how it felt to experience that competition. But nowadays, from what I'm hearing from outside sources, internal sources, is that it's really turned a corner, which I'm really happy to hear. And it just makes me want to go back to the company all the more. But now <laughs> I'm sitting here going, the only reason I'm able to sit in front of a panel of like nine or 10 judges and speak confidently and know I can answer any question is because of my experience at the Walt Disney Company. And I'm pretty sure you could obviously say the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's, we answer a lot of weird questions. Oh my gosh. So what is the weirdest <laughs> question you ever got asked? Oh, uh, With, without breaking character integrity, of course. So when I was observing Rapunzel frequently, um, hanging out with her, uh, I, this isn't necessarily f funny. It's actually kind of hard. I got asked hard questions too, funny questions and hard questions. The hardest question I ever or Rapunzel ever received at Disney was um, Make-A-Wish children coming in and asking Rapunzel if 
she could heal them. I think that was the most challenging thing. So not only did we get weird questions, funny questions, but we also learned how to tackle really difficult questions when you're dealing with really highly emotional topics. And that was probably the toughest one that did not happen only once that happened multiple times and that that was the hardest one <laughs> sorry kind of a bummer <laughs> oh, no. are you are you kidding me? i was actually just about to mention that is we are also tasked with dealing through really weighty scenarios and situations make a wish being the top one that we would have these families on their last trips with their most treasured things in the entire world their children the things that they thought would outlive them sitting here going hey, make our last trip magical. Give us something to remember after they're gone. And I've even had Make-A-Wish families return mm -hmm. um, after their child has passed. And that in itself took, it's, took a toll. And I'm really glad the company has things in place now to help us cope with that and are really forgiving if, if somebody needed to leave for a few minutes to collect themselves. Because that wasn't always the case, but I'm so glad it's changing for the better and the company is becoming more conscious about mental health. In fact, in my time at Walt Disney World, they said for each big life event, for each traumatic scenario you go through, you get five three counseling sessions. And yes, by the, by the end of my time there and living across the country from my family alone, I accrued a lot of free counseling sessions. <laughs> <laughs> and the counselors are so wonderful and so helpful. Not all of them are licensed, but they all do their best to help us. And if they can't help us, they give us resources who can, which is what we try to do. I think if, if we can't help people, we try to give them resources. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anything else you want to add about your Disney sort of story? No, I'm excited to hear about yours. Yeah. So I am similar to you, actually, where I also got hired, thankfully, at my first audition as well. Um, so kind of what happened was I was at Disney for my senior year trip at Disney World. I've actually never been to Disneyland, so we might have to fix that. <laughs> I don't have free tickets anymore, but we'll make it work. Um, so I was at Disney for spring break with my swing choir. Um, we were performing at Disney Springs and we were in the parks. It was my 20, or 20, my 18th birthday that week. And I never really cared about the characters. Like I always loved Disney, but my older oldest sister did not like meeting the characters. So as the youngest child, I also did not meet many characters. I think we met like some of the Winnie the Pooh ones sometimes, but I was never like, I have to go meet the princesses. So I've never even thought about it, but we were there and I was like, hmm, I wonder how people work here. So I looked it up, DisneyAuditions.com. Yeah, some people might remember my YouTube channel stories, um, but I looked up auditions and there was one in Chicago. So I asked my parents if I could take, hop on the train, which was an hour ride to the city and audition. And on my way home, I just called my dad and I said, I feel like I'm gonna get this job. So meanwhile, I was already had gone to orientation for college. I had like roommates, classes, like I was going to college. I ended up, I couldn't turn that opportunity down. So I took a gap year and went and worked full time for a year. And then I was seasonal for three and a half years after that until COVID said, Thank you, valued employees, um, <laughs> RIP. So that was kind of how I started there, but it really did, like you said, we both started quite young there and it does take such a huge toll, especially when you are still kind of in those formative, I just turned 25, so I feel like my frontal lobe is more developed now, you know? <laughs> but when you're 18 or 17, you're not, it's not, where it's going to be later on and so when i started i mean i was dumb because i was 18 away from home for the first time but in addition to just trying to navigate life away far away from home far away from chicago i also struggled really heavily as i mentioned previously with depression my whole life i also struggled really heavily with self-esteem and confidence and an interesting tidbit um when i was hired we went to my parents and I before my traditions course, we went to um, 
the summer house because I had never met Anna or Elsa. <laughs> so we went to the summer house and I was crying in line because I looked in a mirror and said, why did they hire me? I am too ugly to do this job. I was crying in line. I think my mom is on this live. She can attest. Yeah, I cried in line because I felt it was so icky. It was August. It was hot. I was sweating. I said, why would they hire me to do this? I'm not cut out for it. I'm not pretty enough to do this job. But, you know, that's just an example of where my mental state was at at that time. That's right before I started. Um, I learned some neat tricks working there because, as you mentioned, you know, there is a lot of inherent competition and comparison. Even if you're not trying to, you can't help but look over at somebody who looks very, very similar to you in very, very similar clothing and not compare yourself. It's really hard to not do that. You're all sitting together, like you said, with beautiful people. How do you not compare yourself? Oh, they look we look very similar, but their nose is a little bit better. I never disliked my nose or my arms until working at Disney. I was told um, towards the end of my time at Disney, you'd get relooks where people would, uh, where they just check to see, because you do have to maintain your appearance in that role, which is totally understandable. But I was told my arms were getting too full. And to this day, I struggle a lot trying to wear something without sleeves because of that comment. I still don't like to wear things without sleeves because I was told my arms were getting too full and that immediately became an insecurity of mine. So I learned some neat tricks like when you need to cry backstage, but you don't wanna mess up your makeup to tilt your head down at a 90 degree angle so the tears just fall straight to the floor. You ever heard that one? Oh, I, I use that one frequently. Also, instead of wiping the tears, take a tissue, like put it in your water line and like dab the tears before they fall. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I didn't know that one. <laughs> yeah, I might never even touch my cheeks, though. They just went straight to the they ground. Straight to the ground. Straight to the ground. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you learn some neat tricks. I still get compliments when people are like, how do you look so good after crying? I'm like, because I did it a lot at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> so that time yeah so you learn lots of fun hello friend you learn lots of fun things about um how to cry while maintaining your makeup so that was really tough um now I'm really thankful to be in a place where I still can hear that little voice even with the Miss America organization it might be easy to compare yourself to other women in the organization but in my experience it really is a strong sisterhood of women who their primary goal is to lift one another up and encourage one another because it's such an amazing network of hardworking women that you can't help but root for one another. So kind of similar in that aspect there, but how it really prepared me for competing for Miss Tennessee, aside from what you already mentioned with the questions, and I think you're going to relate to this one absolutely too, you know how to talk to anybody you meet. You know how to talk to people who don't speak English. I, didn't, I know you experienced that. You can talk oh, to yes. people who don't speak <laughs> English, um, who have um, potentially uh, different communication styles, maybe are deaf, maybe have all these different things going on, but you know and you learn how to create a meaningful, magical, and intentional interaction that that person will remember for the rest of their life in under 70 seconds. Absolutely. You know how to do that. And that's a skill that I really take with me now. I know I am able to talk to anybody I meet. Tell us a little bit about the English thing. Oh my goodness. That was, I obviously I experienced it here in the US too, especially starting in Southern California where you have a lot of tourists who only speak Spanish. You also have a lot of locals who only speak Spanish. So of course I learned like those, those key Spanish phrases to get through, but we were encouraged to not speak foreign languages while we were performing on set, just in case people around us could not, and they wouldn't have that same expectation for a person coming after us. And so moving to China, I was like, oh, I've got this, this is fine. And we realized about two or three weeks into our soft opening, we're like, oh, we kind of do need a little bit of <laughs> Mandarin phrases, but it's nothing extensive. It's nothing super complex where you have to worry about 
conjugating verbs and and proper properly addressing people with their correct status and respect it was simply like um highlight will mean jing which means i'm a hollywood starlet and it's ah. like small things like that but if you if you put them together in the right way if you use the right formula if you greet them if you make sure they know they are the important part of this interaction and you are there to make them feel special and wanted that's what creates a memory for somebody and so when i'd have a guest walk up i'd make sure to address them in both english and mandarin so they know oh my gosh look at her she's making an effort she's trying and then i would talk to them a lot in english because a lot of them actually spoke english thankfully but it's a lot of big movements gesturing but most importantly eye contact knowing that the, your sole focus is on them which i use all the time with the miss america organization going out for appearances and everything if I'm having a conversation with somebody it's going to be eye to eye just me and them and hopefully it's something they're going to remember forever yeah and you know we both are not currently um in that role but i was speaking at a school on friday and with a whole bunch of sixth grade girls and the effect that this crown gives in comparison to the effect that gorgeous Disney costumes gives is very similar. So I also feel like it gives us that aspect of, I mean, not only filling our heart with joy, which I know I dearly miss, but not only it fills our heart, but it also, we, we understand the effect that this crown can have, but not letting it be the main point of who we are, what's important about that interaction. So it's it's that crown effect. It's It really does have such an impact on how, especially young people will view you and what they might expect from you. 100%, it's both like armor, but also an open door. Love is an open door, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. We're in Disney no, mode right really now. You need to let it go. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> Okay, next, uh, next, moving next. Up. So yeah, I feel like, you know, talking about mental health, Disney, um, if anybody has any questions, we had um, a couple already pop up. Yeah, so we have them here. Perfect. So what is your, what would be your second choice? CSI, that's one we got. Well, actually, my CSI used to be um, early diagnosis and treatment of childhood learning disabilities because I have uh, a syndrome called Erlen syndrome, which is basically like dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyspraxia all rolled into one. And it really negatively affected my education growing up. And, you know, Miss America, it's all about education. And so me really struggling, having really low GPAs for a long time really negatively affected me growing up. I mean, I'm still not finished through college because I'm having to go through it the slow path. I'm having to go through one course at a time with with disability assistance. But you know, I'm also learning that that's okay. So that would definitely be my second choice CSI. And I really love the work I've already gotten to do with it. What about you? Yeah, so mine is also slightly different this year. Same vibe. Um, I guess I kind of have two, I'm gonna cheat. Um, so last year, mine really focused a bit more on self-esteem and confidence, but I decided I wanted to branch out, not only to partner with NAMI, which is an organization I obviously really love working with, but also um, just to target mental health as a whole, because I feel like um, it just was a better, um, broader subject where I could still talk about my passion for promoting positive self-esteem and confidence within that. But another one would probably be um, just human trafficking. Growing up, my dad is a father of three girls and growing up, he donated to organizations that work to prevent human trafficking and help women who are coming out of being in that situation. And so I have a lot of respect for my father for he cares so much about that because he had his three daughters. And that's something I'm, I'm also passionate about is helping people who are coming out of those really tough situations be able to get back into a positive, productive life. And that also incorporates mental health too, because I'm sure there are so many challenges with that. Yeah, do you have I your friends you. on the side? Do you want them to ask I her questions? Would that be fun? Yes, ladies, do we have a question? Yes. All right. Okay, so Riley asked, what is your favorite part about competing? Um, 
in the in the state competition or local competition. So what is your favorite part of the competition? Uh, well, Riley, that's actually how I met Riley too. We didn't actually meet in person. We both did a Zoom competition in Florida together. And that's oh. how we met. And we finally met in person. I'm like, oh my gosh, hi. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, you're <laughs> on the computer screen. This is great. Uh, well, I've never competed for state before. So I, but I think my favorite part is going to be talent because, you know, I'm a professional performer, have been for many years, and that's just where I'm most comfortable and most shine. What about you? I like private interview the best. I like to talk a lot. <laughs> um, so I like to talk mm -hmm. and I really like to think really introspectively and dive really deep into different subjects. So I think private interview is my favorite because it's really one of the only opportunities as well. We really get a chance to actually speak to the to the judges and really tell them why we should be Miss Tennessee or Miss California. So I love private interview. I could talk all day long, but we only get 10 minutes. <laughs> oh gosh, I know every time I'm in an interview, I'm like, well, if we had more time, if we could all yeah. just spend the lunch, I have so many more words for your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we could have like another hour, maybe I could tell you everything I want to tell you. <laughs> Hi, Lydia. Do we have uh, anything else? Yes. yes. Uh, what Disney princess do you think would be a great Miss America? Ooh. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, for me, I think it would be Snow White. Because she she not only has the most experience because she is one of the oldest princesses, not age wise, she's just been around the longest. Yeah, but she's she pretty also, young. And <laughs> um, yeah, no, she's like fourteen, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah she's well, like twelve. Up, or 14. Right. <laughs> yes. But I think her capacity for kindness and throughout her, throughout her whole movie, she's just trying to take care of other people. She wants to take care of her seven little friends she takes care of all of her animal friends as well and yes they help her in return but she's most concerned about like oh are you guys okay which is all that mao is about it's about having a heart of service which i think just snow white perfectly encapsulates you i'm a little biased okay. um <laughs> but my bias i'm gonna explain it's not only bias so Rapunzel, um, not only because I love her, but there are, I do have legitimate reasons. I was trying to think if there's anybody else, but no, this is it's her for me um, because first of all, she'd crush talent because she has about a million hobbies she's amazing at. So she would absolutely demolish the talent competition. She'd be one of those speed painters up there, but it'd be like a mural on the whole stage. Yes. So she would demolish talent and she'd have about like 50 options of things to choose from she could do like frying pan combat courses oh i love that yeah so i think she'd crush that oh, yeah. she also similarly to snow white is kind to everybody she saw those big ruffians thugs at the snuggly duckling but she was like love you and <laughs> wanted to know their heart and looked past that scary exterior she wanted to know their heart and she also understands having a dream just like obviously both of us who are here do too and um so she knows what it's like to have a dream and put any everything on the line and do absolutely everything in your power to attain that dream she's also would have some really voluminous hair and would not need extensions unlike me you and me both not to mention in tangled the series she also is all about serving the kingdom of corona so she's got that community service thing too oh, you yeah. know i'm changing my answer i think i think rapunzel <laughs> miss america we agree i convinced her <laughs> snow white would crush it too though snow white I is very snow white would take top five although would snow white advocate for herself that's my only concern you're so right. She did wait for her prince to come and save her, even even though she did not ask for it. That's <sighs> kind of the mo. I Cinderella would also take top five. I think. Yeah, absolutely. She's like, I just want to go to a ball, and I'm gonna. Oh get my gosh, over. our top five Miss America. <gasps> okay, well, Rapunzel, Rapunzel wins for me. Yes, Snow I would. White. Ooh, Belle maybe. would do well in interview. I agree with that. So I think I think Belle would take first runner up. Mm. I think Snow White would take second runner up mm -hmm. because, you know, you got, you got to get that cute in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Elsa would also place really high because she oh. was public speaking. I think she's she more of a Miss USA girly to me. Oh, I don't know. I feel like she could do 
No, Anna would do better in an interview. You're right. She's totally Miss USA. Yeah. I, no, you're right. Elsa's giving Miss Universe for me. Yes. She could literally be Norway, Miss Norway. <laughs> yeah. No joke. She's giving Miss <laughs> Universe. So my said Moana. Oh, Moana, Moana strong as well. She'd be able yeah. to have she could do like ocean conservation for her CSI. Oh, you're so right. And I could just picture Hey Hey and Pua out in the audience cheering her on. Yeah. And like Maui would take up like eight seats. <laughs> Maui would host, let's be real. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I think okay. that's good. I think those are yeah. good. I think those are too. That was Any an awesome questions? question. Oh yeah. We'll do two more. Okay, we, we're gonna do two more. Um, if you had to choose a secondary talent, what would it be? <laughs> okay, I would probably bust out my point too. I'm old with a lot of creaky bones, but I feel like I could pull together a good dying swan or something. And who doesn't love ballet? To clarify for the guest here, are you a vocalist for your talent, right? Yes, I am okay, a vocalist. Too. Yeah, yes. I, we have very similar vocal styles to Belty Musical Theater. Love. Yep. Yeah. Love. Yeah. So definitely second choice, I think, would be Endpoint Ballet because I'm a I'm a retired dancer. Yeah, that sounds like my worst nightmare, but I'd love oh, to tap. Oh. <laughs> I tapped. I I really only took ballet growing up once I got to a certain age because I had to take ballet yeah. in order to take jazz and like modern contemporary. And I liked jazz. We called it modern. Some people call it contemporary and tap, but tap was always my favorite. So yeah, it would definitely be a little bit rusty for me, but I could definitely do a little paradiddle time step moment. Um, Curly temple here. So I guess tap, that would be fun. No, a lot I, of people clog in Tennessee though. And I had never heard of clogging until I moved here. Okay. Did you never watch Kim of Queens? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> okay, Lauren, the second we get off this live, I have homework for you. You're going to okay. go on YouTube. You're going to look up Kim of Queens, full episodes, and you are going to fall in love with Miss Kim. She's a former Miss Georgia, and she's a pageant coach to all of these young girls. And the South is so big on clogging. It is. And she hates it. Miss Kim <laughs> hates clogging. Yes, Riley and I watched many Kim of Queens episodes. Yes, Victoria too. So like, if you are if you want to hear some hate on clogging, go watch Kim of Queens. It is so interesting. And mind you, I love watching the clogging. I don't, I just, I didn't know what it was before. I just thought it was like loose tap shoes, which it kind of is. Kind of, yeah. Um, but yeah, I have uh, one girl who was Miss uh, Tennessee's teen a few years back. She does like an incredible, an incredible number. But yeah, it would be tapping for me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, I remember because I, I watched Miss America growing up like, like most young women did, or at least in my household. And I remember watching Miss America one year. I could not tell you what the year was to save my life, but there was this contestant who did the most phenomenal like vintage themed tap routine. And she had a little frying pan that she was dancing with, but she also did a quick change in the middle of the number where she just pulled a section of her dress and pulled it over. And it was something completely different. And frying it was pan? just, yes, she had a little frying pan because it was like a little fifties housewife kind oh, of. Oh, I didn't hear the housewife part. I was oh like, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a <laughs> okay, retro like housewife, like cooking kind of thing. And then she went from like a housewife thing to like this really sparkly costume underneath. And I remember watching that going, oh my gosh, I want to do that. I want to be not tapping because I cannot tap to save my life. <laughs> but, uh, oh, actually Riley, Riley listed a really good question here. So we'll do that one. And then the other one we have saved, if that's okay. Yeah. I'm happy so, to keep oh, going. beautiful. Thank you, Brent. Uh, Riley Thanks. said, uh, do you have any personal goals at competition this year? Yeah, I think my biggest personal goals for the competition, as a lot of what I've talked about, self-esteem comparison, you know, before I go into any of these situations, I take a moment. And for me, my faith is something that's important to me. So I take a moment and I pray before the competition, before I walk in. Um, I pray for peace and I also pray um, that my talents and my gifts that I was uniquely given are able to shine without me what, worrying about if somebody else's sparkle is sparklier than mine. So just focusing on and praying for peace as well as worrying only about 
Am I sparkling with the gifts that I have been uniquely given without worrying about what anybody else is doing? Because there's no, you can, you just can't, you can't compare. Everybody is uniquely themselves. And so really for me, it's just focusing on how I can grow from this experience and um, how I can show my gifts the best. That's beautiful. I love that. I love Thank that. <laughs> I love what you said. My sparkle is no less sparkly than anyone else's. It's not. I, it's I not. And it. somebody else's sparkle doesn't dull yours. No, it doesn't. And, and quite the opposite. I mean, like we're enhancing each other's sparkle right now. Mm -hmm. Like, Absolutely. just like this is actually how I met Taya and Victoria, who are sitting here with me. I met them at the Miss Los Angeles competition. And not once did we all sit there going, Oh, your sparkle is too sparkly. Get away from my sparkle. We were literally like, oh my gosh, new friends. This is You're so, so cool. much fun. I'm obsessed with you. Exactly. <laughs> and now and now I have like two lifelong friends here, like speaking about sisterhood. So at State, one of my goals is to just really dig into the sisterhood thing, really make some more lifelong friends. Because most of these other title holders, besides my sister queens and like a few select others, I haven't gotten to meet in person. So I really just want to go and have fun, especially since it's my first year and maybe possibly take home a preliminary award. And, but all while maintaining the same goal as you, not letting anybody else's sparkle dull my own because we can all sparkle together and really just nailing my confidence because I, I don't want us to be standing in the wings, shaking like a leaf. I want to be standing there hyping everyone else up to go out there and do their very best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess if we're talking like awards and stuff, I mean, oh, yeah. I'd like to maybe be Miss Tennessee, but we'll oh, see yeah. how that goes. Good goal. You know, I think you <laughs> if we're okay. talking about that, like that would be, a, you know, a personal goal of mine. Why, why, you know, part of why we're both here, but oh, I do believe that the only way I could be Miss Tennessee is if I focus on letting my unique gift shine. 100%. So because... yes, that, that is like a goal. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like we're not, I'm not competing against my other local title holders. That's just not how it is. We're all competing against ourselves yep. because the scores are not based on comparison. They're based on your own individual performance, which is what I really love about this organization. So I'm just so stinking excited, but I think we have another question in the queue. Um, Sarah asked, what are your thoughts on young adults and adults meeting characters without kids? Oh, so back to the Disney questions. Yeah, I have a strong opinion. Okay, go do it. That's my strong <laughs> opinion. Do it. I had so some of my most magical interactions were with adults who maybe like we talked about heavy topics earlier, maybe lost a child. Their child's favorite character was X, Y, Z or 18 year olds who I met or 18 year olds who met Rapunzel and were telling them how she's so scared to graduate college and leave, but because you left your tower at the age of 18, I know I can. And Rapunzel could encourage them and tell them, it is scary. I was scared too, but you have a new dream and you're going to continue to find new dreams. And just adults, oh, the only awkward thing that I don't like, don't propose in front of a character. It's so awkward. I that did. happened with Rapunzel and it was so awkward. She didn't know what to do. It was also a really awkward proposal. Like it wasn't, it was like weird. It was like a, yeah. So yeah, that's the only thing. Please don't propose in front of the characters without at least some warning. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, myself and my friends never minded when they were like, hey, there's this plan coming through. You're really important to them. X, Y, Z, can you help with it? And in that case, the answer is always a resounding, yes, I'd love to be a part of it. But when it's just like spur of the moment and you and your friend are just standing there going, uh, because it's also yeah. really awkward. I have no when idea. They, when they say no. Oh, gosh. Which happens. <laughs> they have said no. Um, and I also, I also have the same strong opinion. Yes, I as an adult still love meeting characters whether I, I've previously met that character or not, it does not matter. Go, have fun. It's, oh, who, oh, who is that? It's this Padme. She decided to join. She's been sleeping. Wait, you're a Star Wars nerd too? Of course. This is Senator Padme Amidala. Oh, much respect to meet you, Senator. 
I'm so happy right now. I could cry. She's a fluffy girl. I love her. She's a fluffy well, girl. If I was at my house, I would bring Jinx on. I have a little black tuxedo cat named Jinxabel mm -hmm. Monsoon Mordu Taylor. Oh wow, love her it. Full name, but you know, we call her Jinx. <laughs> Uh, oh, you know, now Padme and Jinx can be friends, though. I think this is, I know, so. right? Yeah, Riley knows so. Jinx. You gotta hide a Padme down there. Yep. Eventually, I will get an Anakin, but that's later oh. on. That's so precious. <laughs> I think I'd love that. Okay. Do we have any more questions in the queue? No, we just have the five. Okay. We just have those five. Do you have any more on your end, Lauren? Um, I don't think so. Last chance for questions before we're going to wrap up and sign off here, people. Yeah, pull this has been so much fun. Padme was like, mom, time to hang out with me. <laughs> I know. Padme was our timer. We didn't need clocks or anything. <laughs> she we was. And thank you so much to your, I don't know if your friends want to pop in there with their faces oh, and introduce themselves quick. Their no, they're in pajamas. That's okay. <laughs> you don't have to, but if you want to, thank you so yeah. much for helping out here today as well. That yeah. is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you guys. They're, they're, rock. they're nodding. Yes, they, they got thumbs up. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah. Well, I think we are good here. Thank you so much for thank doing you. this with me. I'm so glad we could connect and I know we will continue to connect and I will see you at Disneyland yeah. uh, for my first trip. Um, thank you to all of you guys who joined me. I believe that I'm going to be able to keep this live published um, for some time. Um, I'm not totally sure. I believe I will be able to. But it has been such a pleasure to chat with you today. I, we have so many shared experiences and things in common. And I know we're both just really grateful for this opportunity. You got anything else? No, just good luck. I'm I'm so I'm kind of excited and sad that we're gonna both be at our state competitions at the same time because it would mean we can't really talk to each other because we're gonna be so busy. But honestly, if I get off stage on July first and see that you got crown Miss Tennessee, I cannot tell you how loud I'm gonna be screaming from the <laughs> freaking rooftops. I am rooting for you all the way. And ditto back to you. There are so many. There's a Miss Texas is that night too. Yes, we're all the same night. So it's going to be a lot of really a big sparkly night. energy across the country. It's going to be great. Gonna, I know the sparkle vibes are just going to be emanating into the ozone. Epic. But thank you all so much for joining. Thanks for being here. And we will connect with you all soon. Don't forget to follow her. Follow me to keep up with her journey. Yep. Both title holder and personal. I'm watching you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Bye, guys. Bye, Thank you so much. Thank you.